Hey guys, it's Ross Scott, and on the Spence Couch today, I'm going to be reviewing this Babylon's Ashes by James S. A. Corey, book six of The Expanse. So, as you recall in the previous one, Green Navy attacked Earth, seized control. That's still the case in this one, where the Free Navy is just taking over all the installations across the belt and the outer planets and the moons, and it's just stripping them for its own purposes. Earth is starting to get back on its feet. Billions dead after the attacks. Uh, billions more dying. Uh, the second wave of deaths is now happening. And so basically they've got to try and uh, stop the Free Navy from maintaining control of the gate station and access to all of the worlds beyond. Um, the Martians, because obviously there was the military coup attempt there, Admiral Duarte has hightailed it out to Laconia, one of those worlds, and has essentially uh, sealed themselves up in there. And I suspect that the uh, example of the protomolecule that was stolen in the previous uh, book went with him. I don't know. So we'll see. There's not much on the protomolecule in this one. So no prizes for guessing who is in the centre of all the action. It's Jim Holden and the crew of the Rosinante. Um, Avasarala wants him to take control of Medina Station, which controls the gate complex. Um, and she says, I'm going to assign someone to your crew. And he says, oh, no, 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 no one gets assigned to my crew. Only I decide who's on my crew. And she says, oh, but it's Bobby Draper. I said, oh, that's fine then. You know? <laughs> so that was quite funny how that played out. Bobby and Clarissa Mao are now both essentially full-time members of the crew, although Holden is having some issues uh, certainly with Clarissa and accepting that she's a part of the crew, given she tried to kill him and all of the crew uh, many, many books ago. So, um, they're all facing a massive, massive problem, the Free Navy and the Inner Planets and the rest of the belt. Because of the attacks on Earth and the um, essential... Um, they've kicked out the main part of the solar economy, you know, where they get all of um, their high-grade ores, computers, electronics, all that stuff from. It's going to be a long time before it's producing anything. And um, they've got three and a half years, max, before essentially it's too late for all of them and they'll pretty much all starve to death, no matter where they are in the solar system. Philip, uh, not Philip, sorry, um, Marco Anaros, the head of the Free Navy, he's turning out to not quite be the leader that they thought he was. Um, Obviously, he thinks they've won the war, you know, we'll have our foot on the neck of the Inners for a very long time, they'll do what we want. But Earth and Mars start to come together and start taking back various stations, like, say, Ceres, although at high cost. And, as I said previously, um, the Free Navy's been stripping all of these uh, places for their own resources, hijacking colony ships on the way to the gate station, destroying those who won't um, surrender, that sort of thing. So every time there's a loss for the Free Navy, he's like, oh yeah, that was the plan, and now this is the plan. And then the next one happens, that was the plan, now this is the plan. There's something, this guy, I don't know, I don't think he's the right leader. So one of the inner circle of the Free Navy, um, Captain Michio Pa, she was in one of the early ones um, of the novels, the one where uh, Clarissa's trying to uh, assassinate Holden. Um, she essentially says, I've had enough of this. And she breaks off with her ships, she convinces a few others that, you know what, we're not going to hijack ships, we're going to take these people to the colony worlds, where the, not the colony worlds, sorry, like say, the various moons, like say Callisto, Ganymede, wherever, where they will be safe, Ceres is another one. And of course that means um, she's a traitor to the Free Navy. Yes, indeed. So basically, the, as I said, they have to get to Medina Station to take that over. So, in order to distract the Free Navy, um, from coming after the Rosinante, they launch an all-out assault everywhere, all across the solar system at the same time, attacking all the um, major ports, um, engaging the Free Navy ships, all that sort of thing. Uh, so the Rosinante can go on very high burn to Medina Station and capture it. Uh, it's going to be close from Thingo because they do, of course, get spotted, and there's uh, some ships heading out following them, including... Uh, one that's got Marco on it also. So yes, it's all very tense. And they get to the gate station before the Free Navy, only just. Um, but then, of course, they have to then take out the rail guns that are on that station and uh, 
gonna just shoot them down. So Bobby, you know, she's great out in space in her spacesuit. Remember, she was riding the nuclear missile in one of the previous ones. She leads an assault onto the rail guns, which works, but unfortunately, all the rail guns are destroyed, and they kind of hoped to hold on to them to actually stop Marco when he arrives. So now it looks like they've got no weapons. So um, in the meantime, Naomi has been going over the data on the ring and White's eating ships. And she thinks she's figured out what triggers it. So this is going to be their only uh, way of stopping uh, Marcos, is to trigger the gate mechanism to eat his fleet when it arrives. <laughs> That's brilliant. Elsie loved it. So they sent a ship out to catch its attention, uh, the Free Navy, and uh, make them follow at a certain speed uh, with the right amount of mass and that's what triggers the mechanism and it works fortunately and one minute Marcos is crowing and the next minute he's a cloud you know <laughs> I don't know what happens with that because in the book it says um, he was a cloud and in the dark he sensed something coming for him I don't know I assume eventually in the next trilogy we'll find out what is actually going on with the aliens so it ends up holding and Earth, and Mars, and Michio Pa, and like the free, shall we say, free Navy, they're now in control. But that problem of the three and a half years before they all starve is a big, big problem. <laughs> Obviously, it's a massive problem. So they essentially, Holden says, you know what, we're going to need to unite and form a spacing guild. All of the belters working together, Earth and Mars all working together, or we're all going to die. It's that, like that Lincoln line, isn't it? Um, We'll have to hang together because you can rest assured we'll all hang separately. He proposes Michio Pa to be the head of the Spacing Guild, whereas Avasarala had wanted him to do it. Um, he's not going for that. Um, so that's essentially where it ends in this sixth book. It's absolutely fantastic. That is just a very, very brief rundown of what happens. It's like Game of Thrones. There's loads more happen that I can't even remember. <laughs> but yes, brilliant book. Absolutely loved it. Definitely just as good as all of the others and the action is really, I can't wait to see what happens in the next one because now we're going to actually start, I think, finding out more about the aliens and the protomolecule and all of those worlds because uh, it's about time. I mean, I think there's only going to be nine of these books, isn't there? So 789 should probably follow on that. There's no Detective Miller in this one, unfortunately. I guess he's back with the protomolecule. Hopefully he will turn up once we get out to some of those colony worlds and start exp uh, exploring all that alien tech. So anyway guys, like I said, just my very quick review. I thoroughly recommend this and all of the others to you. Please subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this content. Leave me a comment or suggestion for upcoming topics you'd like to see discussed. I like the video.